Jeff Robot Heroic. As you can see, it's a catapult that also works during match loading with a actual punching platform to put disc on. Really helpful. Uh, our robot is actually, other than our blocker and our intake, our robot is only 12 by 13 inches on the base. So it's quite small compared to most teams. Um, so far, the biggest highlight of our robot to most teams we've noticed, which will be the first thing we'll be explaining today, is our blocker. So our passive blocker is actually deployed without any pneumatics. It's pretty interesting. And plus, which I'll explain later, it can still go under the bar even when deployed. So start start out to the autonomous, so we're still inside the sizing limit. All we have to do, what you saw there, is just barely rotate our um, intake, and it deploys. And so then we sit like this, right? And then kind of absorbs from both directions, which is really useful. But rather being stiff and letting it uh, like bounce off and go random, it absorbs the contact so it doesn't go too far. So as you can see, it folds down, going that way, but also this way as well, which is super useful. See right here, we have a triangle double rubber band system. 164 over band 132. That's how it self keeps going up. Really useful. It's built into our structure of our intake, which I'll just go ahead and explain now. So inside of our intake, we have these braces here, which just help when it gets hit really hard by the robots. This won't warp as well here. Eventually, potentially, this will warp in, but I'm not too worried about it because these are also kind of there to, for running into things. So we have our chain here, which a lot of teams have said that they have a trouble with their rubber bands falling apart on their intake and match, which I, we found a way, instead of using the normal, typical 64 rubber band size, you can see we're using thinner rubber bands, 32 foot size, so they don't actually get caught too much in that thread, as you can see there. Really useful, and we just have a bunch of spacers here. These are our actual like help with the locking mechanism on our blocker. Here's just more structural support, ran by a 30, 64 motor. Now, I don't know yet, but I'm pretty sure this won't be much of an issue with teams running into it since we have this whole front plate here and not, most of the time teams won't be running into our side because this is actually a little farther out. And plus this is really sturdy and we have sand off walkings. Uh, I think the, the probably the coolest part of the future of my robot is a lot of teams that I've seen actually have to manually retract using their pistons to deploy when they run into the goal to score. So let's say we have a, a goal of tri ball sitting here. Rather than completely retracting our intake, we can have the tribal just sit here and we have this really awesome joint feature, which I highly recommend copying if you're doing a similar to four bar deployment design, which that's what the four bar is connected to the piston. Rather than fully retracting, we run in, the piston goes up and we can simply just spit it out into there. Works amazing. And it just calms back down, so. That's our intake. Next up is our drivetrain. Since we were only 12 by 13 inches in diameter and width, we had to actually be very compact and very efficient with our use on our spacing. So you can see here, we have a really nice brain design, battery design. It doesn't come off. It just, that's the only way. Other than that, it won't, it's very sturdy. I've driven over the bump several times or any of the things. Nothing's ever gotten loose. Here's where all of our tubing and partial wiring is. You can see the wiring's a little messy under the robot, but it looks neat on top, so that's what matters. So, as you can see, we have six motors. I'll turn them on. Six motor drive, 30, um, 36 driving to 64. So good, good gear ratio in my opinion, very compact. Uh, we use, we use um, screw bearings with slip blocks just to, re to um, reduce weight. Uh, extremely low resistance. As you can see, we, um, over time, this just like sanded down itself and less even less restriction um here's um all of our tubing as you can see it's pretty complex we are currently still working on our in-game we don't want to talk about it in this video we have found a way to get all the way up into the h tier but we don't know if we want to do it on this robot yet so we here we just have a little pressure gauge just in case doesn't get in the way of the catapult at all. It's really nice. Ran in through the uh, metal support bar there, as you can see. We got two separate solenoids. This is the brand new kit, by the way. I got two sponsors to help pay for it. Here's where our inertial sensor is. Nice little cubby hole for it. So 
So yeah, that is our whole base. And then it's also pretty coherent with our or our four bar design. And I don't want to talk about this because there's actually a couple of special features that you can't see on our flaps to help them lock without actually needing to make a lock. And part of the reason is this really long bore, which has a super ton of power. But there are a couple other features we're not ready to tell. And to add about my base is we have these cool little bearings here to help us drive over the um, hump. We also have a set here. Really helpful. Highly recommend a copy. Super easy to do. You just have them sitting on standoffs at time. For our final explanation, I'll be doing an explanation on the catapult. So we have a 100 RPM motor driving a 24 tooth, driving a 74 for a total RPM of 30. Uh, we have the 24 tooth slip here. We use a grinder for that. One thing that I think our team should do, that is done and other teams should do, is help find a way to mesh those gears better together to prevent like tearing on this gear and use it for a long time. One way that I found is to take a zip ties and tightly mesh these together which doesn't add that much more resistance and a lot less wear and tear in these gears. And I've been running this for a while and there's barely any. Highly recommend to copy that. Another really cool thing on our robot is we don't actually have any bearings. We use zip ties with a rubber band under it, which completely locks these from moving. We also have that in our intake. It's really cool. Continuing on the catapult, we have a punching mech gear. We put it here, hit there. We can shoot it into the actual goal. So I'll be doing a quick demonstration just to get this out of the way. So this is in here, froze. So that was our short range one. I don't want to show the full range yet because we still have a tournament. So it sits down in here. And right now I, I need to install the, a distance sensor for it here off saw in the middle. So we use just a blacked out standoff connected to these. We have only three on here, we can go up to four. Going down in there. Sits really well, like mesh perfectly level with the intake, so it's super smooth going in. And then it goes here, fires. So I'll do a quick intake demonstration. The intake. You can see really good short range. And then for a long range, I'll actually back it up. But I'm still very bad at it, and I'm still practicing for match loading. Before I actually show you how this fires, here's our um, ratchet I've been working on. It's pretty easy. Low resistance, because clearly resistance is key on catapults. So it actually has this very short rubber, really weak rubber band holding this screw in into a standoff into our drive train. And just a typical ratchet. I'm gonna replace it later with a new 6P ratchet, just to give it a little bit more click. So yeah, you can see it rotates. I'll retract the catapult and show you all. Really good. Highly recommend doing a similar design like that. And then one thing that a lot of people can win for, let me get this out of the way. Match loading catapult position, back tile on the puncher deck. That was actually a bad punch, still worked out well. I'll do one more. See, it gets right from the goal. So that's all I'm ready to explain for today. This is 53863H Heroic Robotics. Thank you for watching our video. Any questions, please drop a like. Maybe subscribe if you like it. This is our beginning tournament robot. I'm only probably going to do two, three terms with this. We already got a scat in mind. It's going to be very good. My favorite parts of the robot is probably the blocker, this, the, um, the joints on the intake, and then the puncher. So I built all this robot by myself. I got a team now. This is going to be great. Good luck and good luck and over under everybody.